Stedman Cheely, welcome back to Tuscaloosa, sir. I hope you're having a great day. I am. I'm playing. Been playing in a charity golf tournament for Cross Point and uh, played pretty good golf, and so I'm having a great day. It's all about you, quarterbacks. You know, we had John Parker on earlier and Greg McElroy on earlier this week, and uh, both of them are bragging about their their golf games. So uh, it must be something to do with quarterbacks and golf. Well, I mean, all of us want to be able to be golfers. Of course, uh, me, I, I want to be good at golf and tennis and. And and those sports, it's just as you get older, you don't have quite the time to put into it because of you know work and children and family and sure. all that, which are very very important. But it's a lot of fun. Stedman, uh, where do you spend the majority of your time? Do you spend it back in Dothan, or are you here in Tuscaloosa quite a bit as well? Um, I'm here in Tuscaloosa a, a, a good bit of the time, and really all the, all, all over the state. My law practice. You know, I'm a litigation warrior, so, uh, you know, I'm pretty much everywhere all over the state uh, doing litigation. So you, you may never know where I may be. You know, like next week I'll be in Huntsville and then in Albertville and, you know, just different places. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, listen, I want to ask you, and, and this may sound like a generic question, but uh, when I say the 1979 University of Alabama football team – What's that first thing that pops in your head about that football team? Uh, a team that committed to, to going undefeated. You know the you know the we've gone my sophomore and junior year eleven and one left and one, and we just made a real commitment to you know to go undefeated and 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 to be national champions and uh, and you know I, I think um, we we had a tremendous defense. You know, we had a great offense, but we had a tremendous defense. And, uh, and you know, Coach Ryan used to always say you you win championships and games with defense and kicking. And um, we were just real blessed to have a group of guys that all have been around. You know, like on our offense, we had nine seniors or five-year seniors. And then we had two juniors, and that was um, – Major Ogilvy and Billy Jackson. So we had a real seasoned, you know, group of guys because, you know, at that time everybody was trying to come up with some new defense to stop the wishbone. And uh, so, I mean, every week we saw the craziest things. So it was always a challenge and, uh, you know, just a a great group of guys that were committed to, to being a national champion. Stedman, can you somewhat understand, I mean, to tie in the current day, because you're saying that everybody was throwing all sorts of things at you guys, is it that a little bit of what Alabama's going through now with Tua and these wide receivers and this explosive offense that they're throwing a lot of things at these guys? Oh, yes. I mean, everybody's saying, well, okay, you know, if we don't do all this stuff, they're going to beat us anyway. So they're going to try a lot of, you know, different defenses, different calls, and to try to, you know, to get them out of rhythm, to get them into something maybe they hadn't seen or they're not sure about or that kind of thing. And that's, you know, that's just what you face. Can, can I get your thoughts from a quarterback perspective on, on Tua Tonga Valoa? Incredible. <laughs> that's just all I got to say. He's amazing. He's just, you know, he has done so well and, and it's just a great person, and we're so blessed to have him. Uh, you know, he's just a class act. He's a fun guy to throw the football. I mean, you, you sit there and you just kind of marvel at the, the ease, the way that it, it comes off of his hand. Yeah, I mean, he's a natural. You know, <clears throat> a lot of quarterbacks have to kind of work at it. But, I mean, all you've got to do is watch Tom Brady. You watch, you know, Drew Brees. You can – and, and you know, you watch these guys that that are naturals, and it just it's it's easy for them. Whereas some guys, I mean, they're good, they're great athletes, but it's just not natural for them. And two is that way. Yeah. And he throws a very, you know, very catchable ball. Uh, you know, and he's he puts it up there so his receivers can catch it, and he makes it easy for. Them. Of course, you know, we've got great receivers, but. But he helps in, in that regard. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to be able to watch these wide receivers. I mean, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs. I mean, you may have 
uh, the best wide receiver, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, and there's even guys that are behind them that grab your attention in practice but have not been able to showcase. I mean, it's pretty good to be thrown to those type of wide receivers. Yeah, I mean, it's just a basic. I mean, I, w- I wouldn't even know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it, and it's so neat to have that much talent. And, but also, you know, to have an offense that's, that's explosive. But, you know, the flip side of that is that, like, you know, when I play, we controlled the ball. So, you know, we ate up the clock. Our defense didn't have to be on the field that much. And, and you know, there's something to say about you give and take in a lot of that. When you score too fast, you know, you're putting your defense on the field a lot more, um, which, you know, you, that's kind of hard to understand. But, you know, as long as the other team's not scoring, you're fine. But if they're scoring and you're scoring, then it's, it's pretty tough on you. Stedman, uh, one of the things that Cecil Hurt pointed out, and, and he said that he would love for me to you know, ask you this question on the air, is he said that they never doubted that they were going to win the game. He said they lined up against anybody. They had 100% confidence in in their team that they were going to win the game. He, he said uh, that would be a good question that I could throw to you. Uh, I'm curious if, if you kind of felt the same way, that uh, when you look at that 79 team, you lined up, you felt like that you were going to win the game, no doubt. Uh, I mean, there was never even a question. And, and see, I wasn't worried about winning the game. I was just making, hoping that we played well enough and, you know, made Coach Brian happy and we executed and, you know, did all the things that we were supposed to do. But winning was, you know, that was never an issue. And, I'm, you know, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying that's how much confidence we had in, in our team, in every aspect that uh, we were – Oh gosh, I don't know if we can win the Saturday. We're gonna have to really play it. No, it's we just need to do what we need to do, and we'll be fine, and we'll win, and go on to the next one. That's really unique. The one word that you use that I I kind of picked up on there, and and I hear it from a lot of the former players who played under Coach Paul Bear Bryant, uh, even Coach Stallings when he joins us every Wednesday at five, he uses that same uh, wording that you just used. We want to make Coach Bryant happy. How much was that part of the motivation? Well, I mean, it was a lot because Coach Bryant uh, had an air about him that was just amazing. But he made you play better than you were. He made you do things probably beyond your abilities. And next thing you know, you you believe. And so you're, you're playing at a higher level. You're executing at a higher level. And you have so much confidence. See, when we would run on the field, we pretty much would beat the other team because of who we were. And, you know, we, we, you know, they would watch our film. They would see how many people we would play. Because, see, that's something people forget about, is we would play 50 people the first half. And, um, you know, and, and so when the second half came around, I mean, the other team's exhausted, and we're still bringing in fresh guys. Because everybody knows the more you play, uh, you got to play is how well you did. So, I mean, we were just letting go. But, I mean, we might play two or three offensive units the first half. And that's just – that was Alabama's way. It was an air of competition and, uh, you know, just wide open. And we would just wear everybody down. All right. Now you don't have Coach Bryan or any of those assistant coaches that can give you the stare down. Was practice harder than a game for you? I mean, I mean, because I'm, I'm hearing you talk about this talent, and I'm just thinking about the talent, the practice. I mean, practice must have been crazy intensity for you guys with all this much skills. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, you know, I, I was glad because, you know, my freshman year, I never even graced the field or traveled or anything. You know, I was a scholarship quarterback. But, you know, I started at number nine. I had to kind of work my way out. Practices were brutal. You know, we hit, you know, we um, Saturday mornings we had to get up, run gas. I mean, it was just a different world. And, you know, I always laugh and say the people that got to play on Saturday, the ones still left the team. <laughs> and, uh, wow, that's awesome. But, you know, that's just, that was the, <clears throat> the Bama way. And, and, you know, most people don't realize this. It's, 
I don't know if this has ever even really been talked about, but when the best scrimmaged against the best, that would be the Reds against the HHs, there was more electricity on the field than when I played three, essentially three national championship games. That's, that's the air of competition we have between our offense and defense. You know, if I could talk to Coach Bryan or any of those assistant coaches, I, I wonder if that really made their job easier. When you can create that culture of competition, I mean, that would be a fun coach. I've never been a coach, but it would be a fun group to coach if you can create that competitive edge. Well, yeah, because, I mean, everybody is – given everything they have in practice. And if you don't, you might just go from the first team to the third team. I've seen that happen overnight. Wow. You know, I've seen guys that were all Americans be on the scout team, you know, to send a message. I mean, nobody was (laughs) – I mean, it's every day you had to bring your A game. Every day. And, you know, I mean, during – as the season would wear on, we would kind of let up a little bit, especially for big games. But if we didn't have a real big game, I used to hate it if we, you know, were playing an SEC team or something because back then they weren't necessarily our biggest games. And because uh, we were playing USC, Nebraska, and, you know, different powerhouses as our non-conference games. And, and uh, you know, because our, our week of practice would be so hard. But that was just, you know, the way Coach Brian did it. A final question for Stedman Sheedley is we're saluting him. He's going to be one of the honorary captains for the 1979 National Championship team, along with all of his teammates there prior to the game. They'll be recognized inside Bryant Diddy Stadium. What's the sense of pride that you take in what's happening in current day? Because without you guys, uh, this might have not have been possible with the tradition of the perfect marriage between Nick Saban and Alabama. But the way Alabama's playing now reminds us a lot of that 70s, that generation. What, what's the sense of pride that you take in, in well, what's Well, I mean, that, you know, as a former player and somebody who wears the crimson, I mean, you're just so thankful that, you know, the product that's being put on the field is so amazing and so incredible. <laughs> I'm laughing because my team's telling me we, we won the tournament. <laughs> oh, right. did, did you win the Crossing Points Tournament? I well, we're I think were we the net winner. Oh, we were the gross winner. Okay, good deal. All right. Hey, listen, you're still a champion, Stedman. I know. I, I, it's our weekend. <laughs> well, good, good. Uh, hopefully, uh, that's it's a, it's a great charity that you're talking about. Crossing points uh, here does a lot of great. Oh work. yes, it really is, and they do an incredible job. I mean, they're just amazing. Hey, listen, Sted- Stedman, thank you again for spending 15 minutes with us talking about that 79 team. Hey, no, no problem. I hope to see y'all this weekend. Yes, sir. We'll Roll salute tight. you inside the stadium. Roll tight to you. Thank you so much.